My name is Mary, and I shall be your guide today through our tour of Universal Studios and our grand history. Of course, I could not do this job alone, so let me introduce my partner in crime, my other half, and most importantly, our driver, George. Be nice to him, considering our lives are in his hands. Now, just a reminder to stay inside the tram at all times during the tour. That includes your hands, feet, head, tentacles, or any other appendages you might have with you. The last thing we need is for someone to get caught on something or fall out of the car and create a real-world trolley problem. Contrived ethical dilemmas aside, how about we get this show on the road? After you, George! As we go along this tour, you will become familiar with the main features of our lovely park and learn some fun and interesting parts of our history. You never know when that sort of knowledge will come in handy. The first destination on our tour is Timeline Drive. Here you can see posters from some of our greatest hits dating all the way back to our 1931 rendition of Dracula. If you're ever in need of something to watch on a Friday night, maybe give one of these a try. Some of them may be a bit old, but they're still beautiful works of art. Get some friends together and maybe try the original version of The Mummy or Creature of the Black Lagoon. You'll get a kick out of them. The films Universal Studios is better known for in our day and age start in the later half of the 1900s. Many of you have probably heard of the classic thriller Jaws from 1975 or one of my favorites, the 1982 movie E.T. If you didn't know, E.T. stands for extraterrestrial, meaning something that came to us from beyond our planet Earth. Over on our right, these large structures are the studio's production buildings. This is where the magic happens, where everyone comes together to make the movies that we love. It takes a huge number of people to make a film, though, especially today when there are so many special effects. Of course, we need actors, but we also need writers to make the script, directors to make sure that the actors and everyone else make the best artistic choices, and producers to keep everyone on schedule. Of course, none of that would be possible without our carpenters, gaffers, lighting crew, camera people, CGI teams, makeup artists, electricians, pyrotechnicians. Honestly, if you can think of a job, chances are someone with that job has worked on at least one movie with us here. Or at least for a little while. You're now entering the New York section. We're only here for a moment, but you can see the Museum of Antiquities. There, you'll find our Revenge of the Mummy ride, where you can help defeat an ancient evil alongside the brave and dashing Rick O'Connell. Don't worry, we'll be back to see the rest of New York later. Now I welcome you to the Golden Gate City, San Francisco! This hilly town is famous for its tram system and infamous for its earthquakes. Most earthquakes are caused when two tectonic plates grind against each other and suddenly shift. The entire planet is covered in these plates, and the places where they meet are called fault lines. Wouldn't you know it, most of California, San Francisco included, lies on a fault line, so you can expect a lot of earthquakes in this area. Speaking of which, I want to show you a little demonstration on how we make earthquakes in the movies. This set was built in the 1980s with the tracks dug right into the floor. When they were done with that movie, though, the guys in charge thought, hmm, you know, earthquakes are pretty common in movies, so let's just keep this one. Now all they need to do is redecorate the scene whenever they want a different earthquake location. Let's see it in action. Here we go. Everything is automated and on track, so the scene can be reset and 
about 15 seconds. We don't actually film in there too often, but it seems some use and makes for a fun demo like that. Anyhow, welcome back to the Big Apple. This grand old town has history and culture everywhere, provided you can overlook the Yorkshire Terrier-sized rats and is a massive hub of the arts. The famous street Broadway is home to some of the best and most popular theater performances in the world, but you can find beautiful, rich work all over town. The city is like an incubator for the arts, some place where some of our country's greatest works are born, including a bunch of movies. Not everything is filmed in California after all. Passing on our left, we see the building where the ride based on Steven Spielberg's famous film E.T. runs. If you haven't yet, you should give it a whirl. Now that's something to phone home about. Now this is what we call Hollywood Land, and up here is our Monster Cafe, where you can see all of the classic monsters from our films, like Frankenstein's Monster, Dracula, the Wolfman, and the creature from the Black Lagoon. And don't worry, they don't bite. Much. We're passing by the Universal Globe now. Right now it's missing something, though. I heard that Woody Woodpecker asked you to help find the missing letters and restore the globe. I hope to see those letters back soon. The park just isn't the same without them all spinning around. Something smells swampy. I heard a green ochre lives over there. Take a moment to appreciate the beautiful sounds of nature. Of course, that's all just part of the movie magic. From here, though, we'll be taking a turn into the darker side of the park. We now enter the realm of the Lord of the Jungle. Join me as we pay tribute to Kong, Kong, Kong. Everyone, Kong, Kong, Kong. Really? No one? I'm just. Okay, well, let's hope he isn't insulted by your lack of reverence. Otherwise, he might throw this tram all the way to New York. And I don't mean the movies that we just drove through on the way here. By the way, if you haven't yet and are feeling particularly brave, I highly recommend stopping by the ride we have here, Reign of Kong. You can join Kate and her expedition team as they delve into the caverns and other lost places to uncover the secrets of Skull Island. This is what we call Old Mexico, and it's just the kind of place we'd take a camera crew if they were looking to film something set out in the Old Wild West. Now this area has something of a weird localized weather system, so I apologize for the rain as we... Hey, uh, George, why'd you stop the tram? You can get going again, right? No, I'm not asking the passengers to get out and play. Not in the rain! That's just... Just skip through the rest of the section, George. I mean, everything's so 
supposed to be contained and safe, but you never know when. Oh! Oh, oh my. I, uh, I hope that wasn't poison this time. We lost our last tour group and one of those things got a little spooked and sprayed us. I mean, I don't feel like I'm about to keel over and pass out, but, well, maybe everyone should take a quick shower once we're done with the tour, just in case. My favorite part of the park. Welcome to Amity Island, where the sun is warm and the swimming is prime. If you're in the mood for a beach day, this is the place to. The beach is closed. Huh, I wonder why. Put out those 
and there won't even be a singe on the structure itself! Now, just to be clear, because a lot of people forget about this, the monster we just saw is from the movie Frankenstein, but Frankenstein was the name of the scientist who created the monster, not the monster himself. A common misconception. But the scientist is the true monster of the story, at least in the original book, because of his arrogance, thinking he had power over life and death, and because he was unable to love his own creation. And with that, we come to the end of our time together. I hope that you enjoyed yourselves. If you did, my name is Mary, and my partner is George. If you didn't, my name is Sue, and the driver was just a figment of your imagination. Enjoy the rest of your day and come back anytime to ride Universal Studios' world-famous studio tour! Bye-bye!